uh, Leif Jackson here uh, with Chris Kubeka. Welcome back, Chris. Uh, we have something uh, breaking news. There's this coronavirus thing going on. Uh, you might have heard of it. Um, it's all over the news. Um, today, we're going to cover a little bit about what that means and kinds of things you can do to stay productive in, while isolated or, you know, kind of issues happening. So, Chris, do you mind telling us a little bit about your experience with viruses like this in the past where, you know, there's been a, a mass group and those kinds of things? Well, uh, basically my first professional job, uh, not military related, was actually disaster recovery and business continuity planning with a focus on uh, pandemics, uh, viruses, bacteria involving both human beings and animals, especially agricultural animals. And back then our focus were twofold. We were looking at anthrax, but we were also looking at uh, different types of flus and what businesses could do to keep going while enabling remote work, shifting uh, production and work to locations that were, say, virus or bacteria free if there was some sort of outbreak and to keep both their businesses, organizations and economies going. Interesting. So how do you stay productive in times like this? Well, I think now we're seeing a lot more shift to the remote world mm -hmm. and trying to uh, both uh, stay at home and stay safe, but at the same time connect to our organization organizations, uh, systems back at say, uh, central headquarters. Right. And that's one of the things that we're going to be doing more and more, uh, as this goes. And as the public also realizes, uh, that these are actual real threats. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and where, where are some areas where this is actually occurring right now? Like where people are you mentioned that they're quarantined and, you know, working from home and those kinds of things. Well, currently over 60 million people in Italy are now uh, being isolated. The entire country of Italy is quarantined. Uh, Slovenia, where I was going to be going in a few weeks, uh, that area is starting to shut down because they border northern Italy. Austria has closed their borders to Italians, for example. Um Micronesia and Israel have closed their borders to all incoming people. And uh, in the case of Israel, have told tourists that they need to leave on a timely manner, but they need to leave. And more and more, at least European countries, uh, when you try to enter, even to go back home, you are then under a self-isolation quarantining order where you have to stay home for at least 14 days. And of course, China. And of course, China. Yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, I think the message is don't think this isn't going to happen to your country or your area, right? Like this is, this is, this might happen to you next week, next, you know, month, it, it could happen. Um, so, you know, that being said, like in order to, uh, continue to develop your company, like what are the ki kinds of things that you can do in the meantime? Well, I think you're going to have to start looking at increasing bandwidth when it comes to internet connectivity. Uh, this is actually a pretty big boon for uh, more IoT and industrial systems that can be run and remotely managed, uh, as well as um, looking at you may want to keep up and running with workers, but what's the liability that is going to then be shifted to your organization if you happen to have uh, infected individuals in your company. So more and more people and more organizations are going to try to uh, shift both remote and also look at where they happen to be producing and getting goods from. Uh, Europe has been very concerned with our over-reliance of Chinese production now because uh, certain things are no longer being produced or being produced at very large numbers like we used to see mm -hmm. before this. So um, more and more IoT, remote industrial control systems, 5G, higher speed broadband access are going to be required. And I think that this is going to really start to accelerate those types of technologies. So um, in that sense, um, what technologies do you think will be, be growing as a part of, as a part of this? Well, I can uh, see uh, industrial IoT. I can also see uh, drones being more and more mm. in our life uh, and included in our lifestyle for things like delivery and so forth. Um, that way you don't have to have so much human contact, but also it's a savings in many other ways as well. 
Um, so if, if I had loads of money to put into stock, I would definitely be looking at some of those particular areas. Hmm. Okay. Um, so as a, as a company, like I have all these people that are now going to work from home. So from a security perspective, what do I need to be concerned with? Like what changes? Because these people are now working at home and aren't now at the office. Well, that means you're going to have to open up systems to the internet and you need to do so securely. That also means you need to know what assets you have on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the more common things I've seen uh, both in the past and even today when I was looking up some information is uh, when you use a, a VPN, uh, some organizations just plug it in and put it in. Mm. And unfortunately, that doesn't mean it's configured with uh, any sort of security in mind. They didn't turn on authentication or encryption. So uh, knowing what you have and making sure that it's um, actually configured correctly. And I also think that open source intelligence gathering systems base will also help with that quite a bit because you're going to expose lots of systems and it only takes one mistake to expose way more things than you meant to. And then, I mean, so basically like, I mean, the landscape is much wider now, yep. right? Because people are at home using their home internet as opposed to the, the, the secure network in your company. Yep. Um, there are precautions put in place, but probably not at this scale, right? Yep. Like you're used to a few people going home and working as opposed to like this number, right? Um, and so are there other, you know, I guess systems to put in place, protocols, like what can I do as an employee, right, to make sure that I I'm not making those mistakes on behalf of my company. Well, um, it kind of provides us a bit of an opportunity right now since there's so much uh, closure and isolation that uh, people can look at starting a track on at least some basic uh, digital security education and micro certifications because social gatherings are being cut down. Uh, in the past uh, week and a half, I now have had seven events canceled on me. Mm. Um, I'm not going to be visiting uh, really, really large gathering locations because of various risks. Yeah, And so uh, going out socially is going to be trimmed down. And I hate getting bored um, but also don't want to be that, say, vector, even if it's for the coronavirus or for some other reason. And if I were an employee, uh, this would be a very, very good opportunity, as it would be for an employer to provide a very, very, very good opportunity for distance learning. Awesome. Well, we're a site for distance learning. Yes. Right. Um, so um, I, I'm fortunate I lead the, the community and the content side. So um, one of the things that we hear from our community is you never feel like you're learning alone, right? And so unlike uh, a lot of online learning where it's just about the content, we are very much about creating a community atmosphere. Uh, so you're working together on both your development and also others, right, as, as you're going along. Um, and so what are the kinds of things that, you know, I could take right right now to be able to to improve myself in, in these kinds of situations? Well, I would take a look at uh, an overview of networking to ensure that your home network is set up correctly, since you're also going to be opening it up to your business network. And what that means is if your employer has not set up their stuff correctly, it could actually expose your home information, which a lot of people don't particularly uh, think is a good idea. Uh, in addition to that, trying to talk to people, because this... Uh, current time that we're in, it can be quite isolating. Mm -hmm. So talking to other people and keeping that community going um, when it gets stressful, when the kids are now no longer in school, when the universities are being closed, even Harvard is now closed. Mm -hmm. So trying to keep uh, talking and learning and growing, it's not going to be such a difficult time period. Mm -hmm. And, and I think opportunities like this uh, come along and then it seems like a bad thing, you know, uh, for, but um, it might change how you how you look at learning. Right. Like so it might change your outlook on how to structure your own learning. Right. Um, and forcing people to actually learn in a different way might might actually improve them. Right. Like because now they they have that capability in a different sense. Absolutely. Um, so also from like the creation side, you're, you created a great course for us. Um, and you continue to build awesome content. 
Uh, can you talk a little bit about like, you know, your experience with our creator network um, and how you see it kind of growing and those kinds of things? Well, I've been pretty impressed because uh, it's a very, very active creator community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also try to engage, although now it'll just be online, uh, <laughs> with some of the community members. Yeah. And I really enjoy that because people are excited to belong. People are excited to participate. Now, it's not the easiest thing as an instructor to set up course content because it's a different way of delivering uh, learning and knowledge. However, there's a lot of help that I've been given and this fact because people are eager, people want to learn, and people want to grow. So I have been extremely impressed with it. That's awesome. So if you're thinking of creating a course or if you want to help out with a course in some way, uh, we're the place, right? And Now's so, the time. Yeah. A great way to connect with people online uh, in a different way. Um, and yeah, like you said, now's the time. You know, I'm usually uh, traveling around the world almost nonstop. I usually have maybe a day in between another country or another continent. And uh, I'm still trying to find out when I return from the U.S. to the Netherlands if I'll have to uh, self-isolate for 14 days. But uh, if so, it's going to give me a very good opportunity to uh, refine and uh, keep going with the course content here. Uh, so I'm trying to turn that, oh, darn, can't uh, sleepily get on and off, off an aircraft to wherever I might be going to actually focusing, concentrating, getting to know even more uh, members of the creator community. And uh, it'll be the first time in a very long time uh, that I will have been home for longer than, I don't know, five days. So I'm using that opportunity. That's fantastic. No, and we, we appreciate that. And that's that's going to continually grow uh, our everyone right across the board. So thanks so much, Chris. Any last thoughts for our, our group here? Well, I would say um, try to stay as active as possible online with good people during a time of stress and uh Try to turn uh, this into an unfortunate but good opportunity. Fantastic. I appreciate it, Chris. Oh, thank you so much. Cheers. Bye.